Howdy, y'all. You ready for a good show tonight? Are you ready for a good show tonight? Well, welcome to How the West Was Really Won, performance by our Trinity students. They've worked so hard working on their dancing moves, their singing, and their memorization of speaking parts, and they're anxious to share their performance with you. And as you go along, you're going to get a little fun history lesson of the Old West. So enjoy that as well. And one more thing before we begin. If you'd be so generous and kind as to put some money in the, the free will offering baskets to help defray some of the cost, we certainly appreciate that. So one more time, are you ready for a great show? We will eat mostly 
buffalo meat we kill along the way. Buffalo meat? Poor Eliza! Although it's May, it's still cold at this altitude. Water freezes in the buckets. We break camp at 6 o'clock and we cover about 25 miles a day. It rains a lot and everything in our tent is wet. There isn't much fuel, so we burn prairie coal. Now maybe I ought to explain that. We think fuel shortages are new. Well, they aren't. The lack of wood for settlers to burn what Eliza politely calls prairie coal. That was what went on. Now that's a fuel shortage. It's hard to make people back in the East understand the mess. For one thing, it's too big. I mean, with Davy Crockett and Jim Boyle fighting the Santa Ana at the Alamo in the Southwest, I'm fighting snowstorms in the Northwest.
never got gold fever. Too smart. Name's Arizona Mary. I'm a bullwhacker. You know what that is? I drive 16 oxen hitched to a 20 cent pile wagon. I have been just about every two bit mining camp in California. Why, I? True to her profession, Mary had one of the most colorful vocabularies in the West. Her screaming profanities at those 16 oxen was about as close as that century ever got to an 18 wheeler and the CB radio. I know them all. Men and women strike the rich for a minute, dead broke the next. Stick to oxen. That's my advice. Oh yes, ma'am. You can start reading right here. I've already read the rest. Gold has really changed California. We've moved to San Francisco, and you should come and visit us. The Butterfield Overland Express has four stagecoaches weekly between St. Louis and San Francisco. They run day and night and cover 100 miles in 24 hours. Oh boy! When are we going? We aren't. Now listen. Things sure are moving faster than when I came out here 14 years ago. About stagecoaches, you might prefer traveling winter, because I understand the stages are very dusty in summer. On the other hand, they are very cold in the winter. If Martha was smart, she'll wait until the railroads get to California. Packed up for Mrs. Eliza Spaulding. It's from New York.
whole pancake we used to call them. And Virginia City, boy oh boy, that was the most famous mining town in the West. I think it's a museum today, but back then... I hate to interrupt you, but you need to get back to how the West was really one. I think we're up to 1860. Why don't you tell them about the Pony Express? I'll do it. Yes, sir, I'll tell them. Folks, with men like me and relays of horses, you can get your mail over all the way across the country in just 10 days. Provided the $5 per half ounce it takes to send one. Well, the rates are better today. I can't say the service hasn't hurt much. The Pony Express didn't last for a couple of years, but then it was replaced by the telegraph. War! They fired out Fort Sumter! It's war! War between the state! That was April 12, 1861. Four years after that, the telegraph carried the news that the war was over. And five days later, it carried the news that President Lincoln had been shot. In the four years the Civil War lasted, we killed more Americans than our enemies would kill in World War II. Sad. Very sad. But you know, out of the war, we got a song that's lasted all these years. It was sung by both sides, and ironically, it was written by both North and South. Julia Howard from Boston wrote the words, and William Stepin from South Carolina wrote the music. I bet you can sing it right along.
and they drove the Bullen Spike in 1869, and the country had its first transcontinental railroad line. Lots of things made their appearance in the West, like these, for instance. Two nickels were good for a haircut or for a dime novel. You better be careful. If your mom catches you reading that, you'll be in trouble. I know. She's always trying to get me to read Mark Twain or Horatio Alger or something. Look at this one. Hurricane Now, Queen of the Saddle and Lasso. I'll bet that's not as good as Mountain Kate. She fights a grizzly bear in that one. Those dime novels were about 5% truth and 95% exaggeration. The adults were getting an equally exaggerated view of the West from the Wild West shows that were touring the East. The most famous one was... Mine, the Buffalo Bill Cody Wild West Show. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, I, William F. Cody, Guarantee that this is the only wild bus show to feature the darling of Ohio, the famous sharpshooter and cowgirl, Miss Annie Oakley. Bill always sounded like he was an ounce in something, even when he wasn't. You know how he got his name? Well, I'll tell you. The Union Pacific hired Cody to supply them with buffalo meat, and each month he presented the railroad with his buffalo bill. <laughs> no, no, that's really the way it happened. Why don't you tell them about this? Before the Civil War, four million cattle were in the Texas Territory. But in 1874, Joseph Glyon, Isaac Elwood invented this, barbed wire. It soon put an end to the wide open space of the West. Our country was being about a close to being about 100 years old. So I guess some changes were to be expected. By 1876, there were 38 states. It was our centennial, and we got ourselves one heck of a birthday party in Philadelphia.
my 11th year here at the WOW Center doing this, and we've never missed a song until tonight. So how about we build a railroad, and let's sing song number 10. <laughs> Central men might make it yet. 